Hello and welcome back to the Storytellers Podcast, where we dive into exploring the magic and the mysteries of this human experience through spirituality, psychology, and storytelling. I'm your host, Bella Divine. I am a Mexican mystic, a trauma specialist, a mentor, and of course, a storyteller. And for today's podcast, we are welcoming a very special guest, a health and wellness expert named Shervine. He is one of the founders of Symbiotica, a really highly acclaimed health and wellness company and brand. And they put a lot of time and care into formulating their health supplements. And so I was really curious to have the opportunity to dive deep with Shervin about all things health and wellness. So in this episode, we talked about healing parasites, health hacks for more energy and mental clarity, the collective awakening, the importance of building inner and outer resilience, and some of Shervin's stories that led him to become the man that he is today. So let's go ahead and dive in. Shervin, thank you for coming down to LA to join me on Storytellers. I'm so excited to have you here. And I just wanted to start by really taking a moment to celebrate your poise and your commitment to like speaking radical truth. I feel like that's really present in the way that you come across online Mm. and in person Mm. and also the impact that you're having in the wellness world. How are you doing today? Bella, I appreciate that warm welcome and I'm doing the best ever. You know, just drove on the 405 like a maniac from Laguna Beach. And, um, you know, it's uh, we're in interesting times, you know, and it's yeah. it's like the call to action is happening now. And I, I don't mean it in like we're at the 11th hour and we need to be stressed out and we need to be out of our mind making bad decisions. But it's like there's a lot going on in the collective. We mentioned that offline and um, I'm feeling the call to really drive the message into the souls of so many. And it's coming from a place of just pure, honest truth, love, Mm. and, you know, deep reverence for the collective. Mm. And so to be here today, storytelling with you, it's an honor. I see what you're doing online. I'm a big supporter, big fan. You bring a a really fierce, beautiful, powerful integration, um, awareness to so many women, and it's reaching us men too. And Mm. it's calling us higher in so many ways. And um, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, I, I feel you on the energy in the collective. It has been like the dial has been turning up and that commitment to truth and sincerity has been feeling really alive for me right now. And I feel like exchanging stories is such a good way to connect over what we're experiencing. I wanted to begin today by asking you about what got you into health and wellness and the space that you're in. Uh, yeah, what, what, what started your journey? Yeah, great question. Um, I don't know if it was anything in my fundamental material world outside of this is just my design. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in my human design. It's in my gene keys. I'm an investigator, anarchist, and a martyr, you know, for better, for worse. And I'm a 1-3 generator. Mm -hmm. And um, I come from a a line of warriors and poets. I'm pure blood Persian. And my parents immigrated here from Iran. And because of the war that took place, they couldn't go back to Iran. And that's why I was born here in the early 80s um, in Southern California. And so I was a first generation, um, you know, Persian kid growing up in Southern California, surfing every day, sports, all the things. But I always felt like something was a little bit different for me um, outside of the relationships I had at five, six, seven years young. And uh, I started getting mentored at an early age by um, you know, the individual responsible for the raw food movement in the late 90s. That's my cousin, David oh, wow. Wolf, so David cool. Avocado Wolf. Nice. I was, you know, it's like that's part of my karma. Like I had that as my cousin who was literally changing the face of food and nutrition and superfoods. He brought all the superfoods to America, cacao, moringa. Mm-hmm. That was, you know, that was kind of his like his path at that time. But he was also cultivating a lot of magic. And it was right around age nine or 10, I started learning about things like the banking system and US foreign policy and our medical system and how screwed up the soil is. And I got really deep into regenerative agriculture. And then from there started my Waldorf education, which was developed by Dr. Rudolf Steiner. Nice, that's so cool. It's just such a cool education system. Yeah, I mean, it's rooted in building intuitive energy and heartfelt energy and nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm versus competition versus having to sit in a chair at 7 30 a.m when a child should be sleeping at that age i mean there's so much there that has been corrupted in the state-sponsored school system and i'm not trying to attack everyone or put everyone down but this is just my philosophy 
uh, we've lost our way in the terms in terms of how we're developing, you know, the minds and hearts of young men and women. And so I had that pedigree. Um, I was, you know, I was wild. I was a wild kid. You know, I was um, I wanted I was a truther. I was the kid that was going into uh, my friend's parents like kitchen and exploring their refrigerator and saying, you know, this pasteurized cooked hormone filled milk this right here is why you can't speak to Kevin because he's his system is so dilapidated. He can't even his he's he's like, you know, he's not even in a parasympathetic state. He's in a dysregulated system. So he's not going to listen to you. Like I was that kid at age 11 and 12 and the parents loved me or hated me. It was like there was no in between. And um and so, you know, by the time I was, you know, done with high school, um I I had a lot of passion and a lot of, you know, fight for the impoverished and and mm -hmm. really wanting to show up and do so many things it, it took me you know being a real wild person where my dad had to come and say you know please you know you have so much going for you you know let's not throw it away with one bad decision you know it's dangerous what you're doing you're speaking out against all these things and so around age 21 as a gift to my father i kind of put a lot of that aside mm -hmm. and I, I do want to also mention I, I had the best dad of all time he was uh I had a very nurturing father that spoke wisdom to me and honored me. He was like water. My mom was the fireball. And so um, I had that love and commitment from my dad, my baba, uh, my whole life. And then, um, you know, I, got, I went into the matrix a little bit around age 22, 23, more of the mechanistic material world. I went into finance and built a very successful company. Uh, I was in private equity for 12 years. And then um, at age you know, 32, 33, I had a near-death experience, um, freebasing 5-methoxydimethyltryptamine, which is the wow. toad medicine. Yeah. So I went into the Bufo rounds and completely obliterated everything that I had projected through the Maya of what I was at that time. I was into, you know, I was hardcore into my fitness. I was hardcore into overachieving. I was hardcore into having the biggest house on top of the hill and mm -hmm. being around the most beautiful women and this whole reality. And as soon as I went into that samadhi state, that death, and I came back into my body, it all stripped out. And literally within six months, I had sold my company, my shares in my company. I had moved to Peru. I had gone through the deepest level of plant integration and all of my childhood energy of the, of the wonder of the, of the occult sciences, Steiner, just literally came back into my body and at that point i became a you know pretty hardcore mystic mm. and I, I lived that way for for a few years hardcore and like my life was a ceremony mm. i was literally going to ceremonies and really deep rooted and 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 stayed balanced in it i didn't get too like we call it the luciferic impulse where you're just too much in the spiritual where you're not grounded and this is a rudolf steiner cosmology you have uh, the Trinity energy, which is Christ is in the middle, Lucifer is on the right, and Ahriman is on the left. Mm -hmm. Ahriman's the dense material, mm -hmm. science, government, systems, things of that nature. Lucifer is hyper spiritual, not grounded. Christ is finding balance between the body and the spirit. And, I, and I've developed that faculty and it helped me go through a lot of trauma um, with my father as he was in his sickness. And also a lot of my dark night of the soul, you know, mm -hmm. I went through a lot and through that pain, all that stuff and building this tribe and this network, um, birth symbiotica mm -hmm. and, um, symbiotica was birthed. And here we are five years later. Um, I talked to my partner, CEO Shahab all the time. He's a, he's a dear, dear brother of mine. I've known him since I was 16 and we're, we are now the we're, we are the fastest growing brand in the space in the consumer goods product space. We just won Inc. Five Thousand fastest growing companies in the world. Amazing! Congratulations! Thanks. <laughs> it's 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 it, it's incredible. It's a testament of doing things the right way mm -hmm. and not having some you know ridiculous investment board that's all about margins. We don't have that. We bootstrap this. So mm -hmm. I have no I have no one to answer to except my own conscious. And so we you know developed everything out of passion and love and and to see it grow to where it is now. And it's, we're not a supplement brand, we're, we're a movement. Mm -hmm. We're shaking up the collective space of, of the supplement space. Cause we know the pharmaceutical industry is insanity in so many ways because you're treating symptoms and there's a, there's shareholders in pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. Like 
how do you have a fiduciary obligation to to gain a profit every quarter mm -hmm. when you're trying to help people? That, that that's an oxymoron. They don't they conflict. Um, but the supplement space was just as bad. I mean, you had so many bad actors in there, just marketing companies, no intention, no thoughtfulness, mm -hmm. no ideation. And so um, I wanted to change that. And um, it was a passion at first. I wanted to just create this artisan brand for my for my crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just blew up into this whole thing. And I'm a biodynamic farmer. I'm a soil guy. I'm a regenerative guy. I'm also understand our cosmology and how the sky clock works and all that stuff. But we have a, a biodynamic farm on the North Shore of Kauai, which I've lived part time for the last 12, 13 years. We grow the be cool. most insane stuff. We're in Kilauea. Yeah, it's insane. And uh, all that magic of being on the land, being around the elders, being around the shamans, being a mystic was cultivated and dropped into the seed of Symbiotica. Mm -hmm. And then when you mix that with the the team we have at Symbiotica, our, our our crew, I don't call them employees, this is our team, my partners, our all, all the all the brass, you have this like incredible alchemy. And here we are going all in. Tell me a little bit, just for anyone who might not have heard of Symbiotica before, what's the mission? Because what what drew me to want to bring you on and hear a little bit more of your stories and the man behind the mission, um, just is like it's not only about quality, but it it's also about nurture of the soul like it feels so much deeper so yeah i would love to hear in your words that's exactly right i mean we're talking about putting in you know composition alchemy into our bodies mm -hmm. like what a responsibility that is for a producer of these products and a manufacturer and mm -hmm. for us um i wanted to you know go out of the way in every aspect of how we source raw materials, how we cultivate raw materials, how we extract raw materials, and ultimately the um, the potentiation of putting these things together. And so everything is done with complete reverence for the human body, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Nothing is looked at in terms of margin, which created a lot of issues. But I, I you know, I, I said, let's let's stay the course. We're going to be able to once we build more of a capacity, we're going to be able to survive this. And we did that. And I would say, you know, f for me, one of my quotes is how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's literally the approach we took with Symbiotica with myself, uh, again, my partner and all of the doctors and chemists and formulators and farmers around. And uh, if, if we can develop formulas that are food based, then we have something and we did that because you know the old adage you are what you eat mm -hmm. but more importantly you are what you can absorb mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we needed to develop something that had a high capacity for an efficacious result and that's what we did and we took the bar higher we did, everything we've done is completely individual idealized and um i mean some of our newer formulas like it took two and a half years to develop just one skew. Wow. Two and a half years in the R&D lab back and forth. I mean, if you looked at our, you wanted to talk about parasites, look at our Para-X formula. That is the most complicated, expansive formula ever in the history of our modern epoch. There might've been something that Merlin did back in the day or Hermes Trismegistus or one of these alchemists two, 3,000 years ago or something Egyptian with Ormus or monatomic M state mm -hmm. stuff. But today in the 21st century Gregorian calendar, whatever this, I don't even believe in that calendar, <laughs> whatever the hell this is, nothing has ever come close to something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's combining ancient biblical magic with modern biology, modern chemistry, mineralization, ozone, you know, compounds mm -hmm. that are found all throughout nature that, that expand your immune system, target things in your body that don't belong there and just create a, a an even playing field so your body can do what it's supposed to do which is thrive this whole thing where we're like trying to hang on and you know this social media wave around the trendy health stuff it's all bullshit like i, I like i'm not going to get mad at people for like drinking their green juice and being proud of it and stuff like that and but at the end of the day, like we 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 should demand excellence from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like I was taught that at an early age, the discipline to do do so. It's part of my ideology, and I think we're we're in a state right now, especially with all the fear, all the pollution, all the toxins, the you know the the traumas. It's like we really need to step up, and so 
I might be fierce for some people and and call, and call them out on their bullshit. I don't care. You mm-hmm. know, I, I care about people and I care about this mission and so does the entire Symbiotica team. So that's why we're pushing this as hard as possible. Mm. Yeah, there's so much in society that keeps us so disconnected from our health, from our bodies. I mean, I'm I'm in the trauma realms. I'm a trained psychotherapist and I've worked with somatic mo- modalities for the last Amazing. like seven years. And so even just getting into the the trauma and the body movement was so radical for a long period of time like people couldn't believe it right it's so different from from traditional therapy or what we're taught to to do to heal ourselves right. and the same goes for for the physical and i want to rewind for a second though for anybody who doesn't know what a parasite is and correct me if i'm wrong a parasite is an organism living within another living organism and they're they're always different organisms right sure and so why should people care about parasites and wh- why do you think it's so important to address parasites okay so i i i want to jump into that but i want to also honor you for the practice that you're doing thank you and that's really beautiful work and i think it goes hand in hand with the concept that you can't treat an overall suffering in an allopathic way Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm also seeing people in the holistic community that are looking for an allopathic answer you know as opposed to like really evaluating the entire inner ecosystem Mm -hmm. through movement through connection to the earth through trauma through relationships Mm -hmm. all of those things so that's beautiful work and that can step in that can go into the parasitic energy because we are living in a parasitic society our our entire system is parasitic by nature and that and it's interesting because Rudolf Steiner has a perspective that, you know, the, the parasites that are within us are also operating our entire fear based capacity, our judgment, all of these things that take us out of our God given right of operating with discernment. Right. So I discernment's one of my main words that I use. It's part of my main lexicon. You know, discernment means that you've evaluated everything with every cell in your body you've educated yourself, you've surrendered, and then you've made a decision. Mm-hmm. And you didn't do it based on a, uh, a collective fear or a trauma that's in your body or something that's been programmed within you. And so if, we, if you think about it, if we discern our reality, the codependency between relationships, the codependency on the government, this idea that someone's coming to save us, all of those things are parasitic by nature. And so if the world is operating in that parasitic complex or that parasitic consciousness, that means that something's going on inside of us for sure. Mm -hmm. And so what we know now is that there are, you know, I can't give you a number, but there are multi-layered forms of parasites that are harboring within the human body. Mm -hmm. And this can come from anything. This can come from walking barefoot in a, you know, a lawn where dogs and cats are going to the bathroom or whatever this can come from you know eating raw fish Mm -hmm. you know at one point you know because there's microscopic eggs and there's ringworm in there i can go on and on parasites your cat you know if you have cats and it's a it's an outside cat it could have toxoplasmosis Mm -hmm. which is toxoplasma gondii which is a cat parasite which has a really unique intelligence and it's very dangerous for women that want to conceive and you know get pregnant it's very very dangerous and so there's so many different parasites out there and when you're under a parasitic influence, meaning the parasites are overridden in the body, right? Because there is a communal perspective of having parasites where there's mutualism. You know, some parasites actually are beneficial. We know that our microbiome mm-hmm. is, you know, way, way on the higher end of organisms that are not mammalian, meaning you are made up of a collection of non-mammalian organisms within your GI tract, mm-hmm. within your microbiome of your mouth. I mean, even in your skin. And some of them are supportive. Some of them help maintain balance. Very the supportive. Ecosystem. Very supportive. Mm-hmm. Like necessary, mm-hmm. actually. Without them, uh, we would we would lose our grounding. We would lose our ability to transmutate uh, information and, and digest and peripherate things in the body. So would probiotics be an example of a supportive parasite or or what would you give as an example just out of curiosity probiotics are you know those are uh strains that are either um derived from human or derived for from soil-based organisms or derived from dairy and Mm -hmm. things like that 
And they're part of our inner ecosystem that keeps us at a homeostasis of digestion and elimination and also developing neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. they, keep the, they keep the pH right as well, which is the percentage of hydrogen in the body and keep us um, a place where we're thriving. I would say parasites are um, definitely something that is not only in third world countries. People here are having parasites. I've seen people go through our protocols and pass large parasites. And when you are run over by parasitic infections, your body is always gonna be behind. Your immune system is always gonna be behind. So think of your immune system as something that, if, if the immune system can target an enemy like straight on, it's got a much better job at fighting that enemy straight on. But if you open up a war to the right, to the left, to the south, northwest, and all of a sudden you have like 19 fronts and then the winter comes and all these things, then all of a sudden your immune system is stretched thin and its ability to use transcription factors, which is coding and information to be able to respond, weakens. Mm -hmm. Once it weakens, then you have a crack. Now, let's talk about co-infections because that plays its part into this whole thing. People are, you know, th th this last year, we had a heavy rainfall in Southern California. And then going into March and April and May, it was a lot of overcast. Mm -hmm. What did that produce in Southern California? A lot of mold, right? And so mold is a very, very dangerous, um, I would say, attacker to the immune system, especially if you have parasites, mm -hmm. especially if you have viral loads, especially if you have candida, especially if you possibly have been exposed to Lyme's disease. So if you have Lyme, you have all these different things, especially if you have heavy metals in your body, like mercury and aluminum and lead and cadmium. You know, we're, there's so much stuff in our atmosphere and our water supply, it's intense. So all of these things at some point create a critical mass. And you throw in parasites in there, you throw all these things and boom, someone has complete failure in their body, their immune system cracks, they become dysregulated and now they can't sleep, they can't properly digest food, they're constantly in stress. They're having headaches and migraines. Um, you know, once you go down that route, it is a heavy, heavy, heavy thing to get out of. And this is where people collapse and have emotional breakdowns because the body is just falling apart. You, you cannot reach higher levels of attainment emotionally if the physical that is holding the soul is, is dilapidated. Mm -hmm. And then you got non-native electromagnetic mag magnetic frequencies. Then you have you know, viral loads because the STD count right now is just through the roof. Mm. It's just like all of these things are real and they're antagonizing the body. And so for me, our approach was we, don't, we weren't like, okay, we want to eradicate parasites. We want to, you know, parasite cleanse, enemas, 21 day fast, become a breatharian. You know, like there's hardcore stuff that you can do, you know, turpentine, like, you know, there's so many different ways of, of approaching this. And some of them are, are incredible. But my whole thing was, I don't want to eradicate the system. I want to neutralize the burden. Mm -hmm. So if the burden right now is at 100%, I want to bring it down to 20%. Mm -hmm. And I want to take that 80% and alleviate it out of the body so the immune system can turn back on. Mm -hmm. And so for me, having strong, strong hydrochloric acid production in the gut is your first line of defense mm -hmm. when it comes to parasites, infections, Lyme disease, things that you get from open mouth stuff, things like that. How do you get that? You make sure you're eating a balanced diet, you're getting acids in your body, and uh, you're not taking like weird calcium supplements or antacids or mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, also your oral microbiome, root cause, the mouth is the beginning stage. I can't tell you how many people are walking around with massive cavitation infections in their mouth. Mm -hmm. And those cavitations are harboring parasites and toxins and all kinds of weird stuff. And it's leaking all throughout their body, causing a trigger in the immune system. Like I, we can go really deep on this stuff, the stuff that I'm passionate about, but it's pretty gross and gnarly. Um, so the, the, I guess the strategy would be is really look in the mirror, see how you feel, mm -hmm. you know, do a um, reconcile your life, reconcile your experience, reconcile how you're living every single day. Um, look at, you know, how you're, you're taking care of, you know, your, your home environment. You know, we, it's important that your home environment is stable and it's clean and it's organized. When you're disorganized, these things are going to happen and it's going to go haywire. So I, I live by those fundamentals. It's, um, it's like how the ancients did it. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the ancients. They're very, um, 
they're they're very detailed on how they rise every day, how they drink fluid every day, how they have their quiet time, how they speak to themselves, and how they listen to their body. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in the world of escapism. Mm -hmm. Social media is definitely playing its part in that, where we can't even sit still for 30 seconds and talk to our liver mm -hmm. and talk to our kidney and talk to our heart and talk to our gut. And um, I would say, first and foremost, you have to find a commitment to this practice. Um, and at the orange, origin of it is self-love. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at some point you have to ask yourself, like, am I worth this? Mm -hmm. You know, am I, do I, do I value myself enough to turn the other escapism bullshit off and say, I'm going to, I'm going to go inwards and choose me today. And once you start doing that, then you start building momentum in all areas of life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be this drastic change where you discommunicate yourself from your entire network and move to India and go live in an ashram. Maybe it is, maybe you got to go do that. Maybe you got to go to the jungles. I don't know, but little things every single day add up. Mm -hmm. And once you start building momentum in that direction, you're going to feel good. When you start feeling good, you start making better decisions mm -hmm. and you're going to start realizing like, no, I'm not going to screw that whole thing up. I, I've just dedicated the last 30 days to bettering myself. I'm not going to go, you know, get twisted on this weekend with, with these people and drink myself to, you know, whatever. And because because that that's always there for you. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter. Can you choose you? Discernment. Back discernment, to discernment. Back to discernment. That's right. Yeah. I think a lot of times when people fall into the world of wellness, mind, body, soul, spirituality, they do think I need to go to an ashram for 30 days. I need to go do the most intense spiritual practice that I can. And sometimes that can even lead to more unhappiness or just keep people, keep people trapped. I'm of the belief that we're on this earth to become self-actualized. So as long as you're pursuing growth and, you know, to evolve your soul in some way, mind, body or soul, mm. you're on the right track. And I'm curious, what would you recommend to somebody who wants to begin working on cleansing themselves of parasites? Because I think we all have parasites, right? Right. Um, what's a simple practice or a simple, small way that they can start cleansing their body? Absolutely. Yeah, great question. Um, the basics and fundamentals of cleansing your body in that sense would start with proper hydration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the beginning of it, if you're not properly hydrated, and I would say, I would say almost everyone is clinically dehydrated in my opinion, because no one's getting the right form of water in and they're not drinking it properly and they're bathing in municipal tap water, which is actually pulling water out. And they're on all kinds of, you know, prescription drugs and diuretics from coffees and teas, things of that nature. So we're, we're not properly hydrated. If you're not properly hydrated, you cannot cleanse, you can't do any detoxification. You can't go to a Vipassana. <laughs> you can't do those things because if you're dehydrated, then your um, your system's unregulated. It's hydration that creates the electrical charge in the body. Mm -hmm. We're a carbon-based suit that's built on earth minerals and mitochondria and light. That's why going in front of the sun and getting the UV and UVB radiation on our on our skin activates the cholesterol, which then activates hormone D, which then activates 3000 genes associated with our immune system. You can't cleanse if all of those things are not moving. So number mm -hmm. one, get hydrated, proper spring water, proper mineralization, that's super critical. Number two, you gotta get grounded to the earth. You gotta get out of this material matrix. You gotta get out of the fake artificial box. You gotta get away from the artificial light. All of those things are deterring your body from being able to actually open up and release the toxic load mm -hmm. because the the parasites love the heavy metals. The parasites love the, ins the the sugar and all that kind of stuff. That stuff is gonna be stuck in you if you're not getting this, this kind of um, action in your body. Um, number three, uh, you know, from there, it, it, I, I would say it goes to elimination diet, mm. okay? So what are the foods that you're putting in your body? Where, where are you getting your foods from? If you're eating anything that's processed, forget about it. You know, like anything, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's like gourmet sourdough bread that's from like a 4,000 4, year old ancient yeast. Like you gotta eliminate the diet. You gotta get all the sugar out. You got to get all anything that can cause a slight aberration in candida or parasite growth. And that's what they feed on. And so elimination diet, proper hydration, getting grounded to the earth. Uh, number four, I would say movement. 
you know, it, movement could be number one. All of these are actually, there's no, there's no order here. Movement, if you're not moving the body, that means that your kidneys and your adrenals are not moving. If mm -hmm. your kidneys and adrenals are moving, that means that the garbage disposal of your body, your lymph system is backed up. Mm -hmm. If your lymph system is backed up, then forget about cleansing because you're just going to cause more problems. I can't tell you how many people come to me and want to go into a liver cleanse with me. And I'm really big on liver health. That's like a big deal for me. I've actually been developing a liver supplement for the last like year and a half. It's about to release in a few weeks. How exciting. That's I'll so, make sure to link it yeah, for yeah. Our listeners. <laughs> really, really exciting. The liver is the alchemist of the body. It's not just the cleanser. It literally transforms everything from lead to gold, gold to lead in the body, it develops all the detergent in the body, all the hormones, all the fat recycling. It regulates the pancreas. So it's part of the insulin uh, cycle, all of that stuff. And so um, if you're not moving, and I mean real movement, okay? I'm not talking about, you know, getting 300, 400 steps a day. I'm talking about high intensity interval training. I'm talking about hiking, putting your body into a higher VO2 max mm -hmm. where the body is in some kind of hormetic state. You familiar familiar with the hormetic state or hormesis? No, no, please explain. So hormesis is a concept that that which does not kill you makes you stronger, mm -hmm. right? Just like your immune system. If you and I lived in a glass bubble our entire life and then someone threw us in the Amazon, we would die almost instantaneously because we didn't develop the response systems and the fact faculties to, to respond to the crazy onset, onset that we were about to receive. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens in our, in our lifespan, in our health span. We need to push ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that today. Like we're in a modern world where we're sitting, we wake up, we're in artificial boxes, we turn on the TV, we call and order food, we don't get in a car, we're not like, you know, I, I, we, I live in the islands part time over there. I, I'm like in the best shape of my life. I have to work for my food. I have to move for, for water. I got to get down to the beach to do my, my get prayers. To the spring. Get to the spring. I'm yeah. a spring water hunter. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? Yeah, for sure. I'm also, I love Kauai. Kauai is, I'm there very frequently and it's sacred okay. land. Here we go. Yeah, we got, so. I got another, <laughs> I got another soul fam member. Yay. Best ever. Okay. So, um, so you, you get what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's, you're not, I'm not, we're not doing that because we're trying to get our steps in, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing that because that's our reality. Mm -hmm. And that, those types of movements, stressing yourself out, like maybe you want to fast for three, four days and go to a caloric restriction. So your body goes into a state of autophagy. Mm -hmm. Autophagy is a Greek word for self-eating. And that eats up the things in the body that don't belong there. So that's another thing for parasites is deep, deep fasting. Um, the hormetic response keeps the body adaptable and alive. It's the opposite of being always dysregulated in stress because it's the low forms of stress that kill us, mm -hmm. right? It's the low forms of stress that create inflammation in the body and oxidation in the body, which is basically the body starts to turn into iron and rust. And that's where people start to age at a drastic rate because their body is not prepared for it. So you want to take care of parasites, you got to get your health up so the body can start targeting the parasites. Mm -hmm. That's why I went to the fundamentals, movement, breath breath is another way like when, when we breathe we're not just oxygenating the body we're also putting our body in a state so we can breathe out toxins mm -hmm. you know what i mean so mm -hmm. breath work is about releasing toxic loads um, especially if someone's sick and filled with candida and infection which is a big majority of the world right now it's pretty intense when i when you think about what people's bodies are going through mm -hmm. and it makes sense why the collective is under this level of stress too because the, the you know the, the the body that they've incarnated in is sick and if you have amalgams in your mouth and you know metal in your mouth and all those things that's going to keep you from possibly getting to the parasites as well so th there's so much to this um so elimination diet um, our para x formula is just phenomenal uh coffee enemas but do them right you don't want to go too crazy um, you know, just going the herbal Ayurvedic route is always um, an exceptional way of, of getting parasites out. And, um, you know, on the full moon, you know, that you know better than I do being a woman, you know, that that moon is really deeply connected to you. It's connected to your cycle. It's connected to your hormones. It's connected to your blood. Um, I feel it as a man, so I can't imagine as a woman. And so those are usually the times where, you know, the parasites are really, really active. Mm -hmm. and it makes total sense. You know, we're, we're, we're in some kind of electromagnetic grid, mm -hmm. right? It's a holographic mm -hmm. or morphogenic field. Mm -hmm. And the moon is um, 
creating a, a frequency um, that activates parasites. So a lot of people choose to do cleansing during that ritual time. And th there's so much more. I, I could spend 10 hours here <laughs> going through this and um, maybe we'll, we'll come back and do a series on it. But I would say that's the first place to start. Get your overall health there. That's a, that's so many great tips, and I'm going to definitely take and integrate some of these. And I just want to speak to some of what you said from the lens of trauma. So I'm, I'm a family constellations practitioner. I work with the morphogenic field, you know, on the energetic level. And so it's so cool You're to see. You're my hero. What oh, the hell's going you. on here? Yeah, family constellations are the deepest work. It, that, that's a huge part of my story is they really helped me to break a lot of my lineage patterns, wow. like especially around love. Like there were no healthy examples of love mm. it, in, as far as I know on either side of my family there's just like no wow. love that lasted and so yeah i mean family constellations have been huge for me and mm. i kind of dedicated my life to that path of psychotherapy first so my foundations are in that but as far as hearing the perspective of the body and health it's such a parallel to the trauma world in the sense that it's really about building resiliency humans are so sensitive and so disconnected from this idea that in order to heal, we have to build resiliency. So many people think that going into trauma means avoiding the things that cause you a traumatic reaction, mm -hmm. but so much of actually healing trauma is learning to build that window of capacity for discomfort. And I know you know this because ice baths and so much of you know the the core wellness practices that um, that do work for people is mm -hmm. all about that. Sure. Yeah. Um, Beautifully said. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I think there's real truth to that. Like. Sometimes it, we've been taught that we got to really push through and push forward and fight and fight and fight. And I think there's a time for that. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a time that we have to sit back and surrender. Coming and, back to those know. cycles of nature. So I'm, I'm half indigenous on my mom's side. Uh, what, yeah, what is Mex your ethnicity? Uh, Mexican, Toltec, and Huichol are my roots. Wow, but I grew, I grew up with a spiritual family. So I grew up with the teachings and everything. On my mom's side, my dad's side is very intellectual. Everyone went to Harvard or to you know an Ivy League school. And so they're all like facts and research. So I like to kind of be the bridge yeah. between like the mystical and the and the scientific. But going back to the ancestral way is like such an important part of all healing work. Right. I mean, time is the te the true test, I think, of, of all of the great teachings and all of the, the key pieces of wisdom you'll find across many different cultures and many different um, indigenous groups throughout history, which is really cool. I completely agree with that. We, we've, I always say we've forgotten what we've forgotten, mm. you know, and that speaks to the indigenous cultures. Right? You know, you have that storied history. My my history is Persian mystics and that are all tribe. And when I tap into like that frequency, because I do a lot of deep meditation, it's part of my reality. And I think that helps me with parasites because, you know, if you're go, 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 and it's completely left brain and completely analytical, your body's not opening up itself to be able to honor freedom and sovereignty and parasites rover running you is the antithesis of freedom. And so I, you know, I've spent time, you know, I've spent time with the Shipibo uh, rituals and a lot of that is so freeing to the, to the human mind and human body. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're operating through the lens of a spiritual science because that's my anthroposophical work as a, as an anthroposophist under Rudolf Steiner's guidelines and his mystic teaching. I really feel like I'm, he's reincarnated in me to a certain mm -hmm. degree, you know, and I think my life after symbiotica or I know is going to be pressing um, the truth of what that spiritual science is. There's that's, never been a time that's needed. That's so interesting. I really don't know much about him, but I'm going to go look him up as soon as this <laughs> is over. I really wanted to ask you about epigenetics. Epigenetics, as far as I understand it and in, in my work, it's the study of how genes change and how we can change our genes, right? That's correct. Yeah. What What are your thoughts on epigenetics, experience with epigenetics, yeah. anything you want to share? I love the idea of epigenetics because it's extremely spiritual and it's mm -hmm. extremely liberating. And I think everything that you and I have been talking about over the last 30, 40 minutes or whatever time this has been is actually about epigenetics. Epi means above genetics. So what your reality looks like, your environmental factors, how you do anything, how you do everything, your experience, all are what regulate what genes switch on, what genes switch off. The hormesis that I, I brought up, that's all about epigenetics. And so we are, we're in a world now that 
has completely deviated from the standard rule of thumb that you're a prisoner to your genetic sequence. You're a prisoner to your hereditary. You're a prisoner to this. At the end of the day, the, the research has come out that only one and a half percent, two percent of pathological diseases are completely genetic. Mm. The rest are turned on or turned off by a switch of your environment. How you, what water you drink, your relationship with your family, your relationship with your partner, your relationship to life, you know, all of the different things, the foods that you eat, the way that you talk to yourself, those are really what dictate how your body evolves or de-evolves. Mm -hmm. And we, we know that the, the, the life cycle has two, has two areas. One is the health span and one is the disease span. Um, I, I learned that frame of reference from Dr. David Sinclair, Harvard geneticist, who's big on, you know, NAD and nicotine, nicotinamide mononucleotide and these, these um, impressive compounds. But when you really dive into the research, you can see that epigenetics really play a part into someone's um, evolution or de-evolution. And the way that they've inputted their life and they approach their life through disciplinary actions is really what's going to give them the most time on this earth feeling good. Now, I always get people that come to me and go, Sherman, are you trying to live forever? You know what? And I'm like, no, I'm not trying to live forever. That's why I have a lot of good times and I, and I allow myself to, to not be so serious about everything all the time. But I want to live as long as I can, as healthy as I can, mm -hmm. because this idea or concept of just like, screw it and let's just ride it and throw caution in the wind doesn't make any sense to me because not for vanity reasons, not because I'm trying to be the, this or that. It's because I'm trying to reach peak potential. Like I... I, I don't think I've hit my peak and like I really want to keep going into my mastery mm -hmm. it, in my fitness, in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. And epigenetics is putting me in that position mm -hmm. to do so, especially the understanding of that. There's a good book um, or a good author. He's a friend of ours, Dr. Bruce Lipton, mm -hmm. The Biology of Belief, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so your belief on who you are, where you are, why you are is going to dictate the outcome. Mm -hmm. And then there's the law of attraction, which plays into that part perfection. And we know that you have a specific resonance in your DNA. I have a specific resonance in our DNA, in my DNA. And that is again why certain people are completely attracted to me wherever I go without even knowing me. And some people can't even stand next to me, mm. right? Because of the energy signature that we hold. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you feel the same way too for men and women. And so I, um, I honor the path and the journey every single day. And I'm also accountable to myself, meaning before I go to bed every night, I really investigate how my day went and that's good for epigenetics because you can start exploring like what worked for you like what what irritated me about what what about that person irritated me that's a carl jung philosophy mm -hmm. like that that right there can expand my form of consciousness so i know what is programmed within me or what's what theme of frustration i have within myself mm -hmm. so i can better that and not go into that cortisol spike and do the same thing over and over and over mm -hmm. this is a rosicrucian practice which is a devout philosophy of intertwining your self-discipline this is an occult perspective which is evaluate every aspect of your life before you go to bed every night so every single day you're building momentum and honoring yourself mm -hmm. through those traditions and i think that's the cornerstone of epigenetics yeah i'm i'm very much of the belief that a good tomorrow starts today that's and right. that we have to be detectives of our minds and of everything that isn't going right or isn't working within the body i mean i even think of all of the blanket terms in the health world world i myself having experienced certain di mystery diagnoses and doctors just kind of say you know oh it's autoimmune disease or it's chronic illness and i you know i've had to really take healing into my own hands and my personal experience and it can be so lonely i'm curious to hear your thoughts on these blanket terms and oh drives me crazy yeah. <laughs> which is a reaction that i have that i have to be careful of because it's very frustrating mm -hmm. all of those things like from Crohn's disease to celiacs, I mean, go on and on, the psoriasis, all those things, all the autoimmune, I hate that term, autoimmune. Like it's such a, it's such a blanket umbrella term that di misdiagnoses somebody's consciousness and what they're experiencing. There's a reason why the body is not responding to itself. There's a reason why something's not turning off or something's not turning on to cast it as an autoimmune and come up with these names is just horrendous to, in my opinion. And it's just like looking at, like if, if you watch, like I, I don't watch TV, 
but once in a while people yeah <laughs> once in a while people send me um commercials of prescription drug commercials and it's insanity i can't even comprehend that this is even out there like who's watching this like who's who's really like because when you're watching that stuff you're optically bringing it into your mm -hmm. cells mm -hmm. like we don't we, we take for granted how powerful touches sound is smell is optics are symbolism symbolism um you know all the different subliminals yeah subliminal messaging and things like that it's full on and that stuff is coding that gets tripped up in your dna and your dna gets confused from it and that can cause a switch so I'm not telling everyone that, you know, you got to hide yourself in a box, but you have to be aware that these things are real because they exist. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it's like the the autoimmune thing. It's I think it puts people in a box mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they, they're they're diagnosed with an autoimmune condition and they don't even know how to handle it and respond to it. And I think a lot of it is mental, emotional mm -hmm. um, lack. Yes. It really is. And um, we can do all the cleansing. We can do all the alchemy. We can do stem cell procedures and peptides and all the crazy things. Those are all best ever. But if the mind is in trauma, is in fear, mm -hmm. and is not addressing core wounds, you're never going to be able to get to a place of homeostasis. The, the, the body takes its cues from the emotional body yeah that's and, the key and whatever you believe is who you become so we have to be so careful of totally. like what we're thinking and and so much of what we're thinking we're not even aware of <laughs> <laughs> we're we're actually in a state this is this is interesting I, I i realized this after i went through the toad realms we're you know the vedics believe that you know we're in the the kali yuga right which is the age of deceit and metal and bronze and war and all of these things and deception. And Rudolf Steiner said that we're going to be in the our emonic influence right now, the heavy, which hyper materialism, mm -hmm. artificial in, uh, intelligence, taking us away from our soul's mission, right? And there's other things that I want to say, but I can't say publicly. By the way, I can't say 99% of what I want to talk about. I just want to make that clear to the audience. 99% of what I truly want to say, I cannot say publicly. And that's because of the position that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. And um, and so my whole thing right now is is that if we are all in some form of an illusion or false identity, we are leaning towards escapism and anger and frustration. There is a reason why the system is flooding us with so much like toxic dopamine rush crap. There's a reason why people are attracted to drama there's a people why people are only attracted to lust there's a people there's a reason why people are only attracted to things that take and deflect their own inner pain and push it on someone else mm -hmm. we're in that age right now hyper 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 look at social media as algorithms it's designed, trend based trend based comparison traps all of those things so my opinion is our perception, I'm just generally speaking, our perception of self today the, is based on how we perceive others perceiving us. Mm -hmm. So literally, I'm playing into this role. I'm acting this role based on how I think others think I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally doing that. And that's why you have the high suicide rates. That's why you have the gnarly divorce rates, the fighting, the cheating, all of this stuff, the destruction of our world mm -hmm. is because nobody's in a in their authentic space. I'm not saying nobody, but I, generally speaking, everyone's kind of in a false reality. And when you're in a false reality, what do you do? You fight, you get angry, you put things in your body that aren't good for you. You're nonviolent communication. It's and you feed the system that's profiting on your insecurity and your pain. <laughs> it's the fuel for mm -hmm. this same gargantuan avalanche that's occurring right now and and we're right now we're heading towards a cliff with no breaks mm -hmm. and the, and the advent of the, these new ai platforms and these new technologies and the, the the higher building of these metropolitan cities the urban sprawls and all that stuff i mean it's chaos we didn't even get into soil health or the hydrological cycle or what's happening in our oceans i mean it's full on mm. 
And I, I, I speak as an alchemist. I'm not speaking as an environmentalist. I'm just, I'm understanding what's happening on our electrical grid, what's being polluted in the skies. I can go on and on. It's, we're, we're in it right now. And um, I think if you're listening, <laughs> this is the cosmic joke or it's the cosmic giggle, right? So instead of like, God, Sherry, I mean, you're really like, what the fuck do we do? Well, I'm just like, you know, I sit back sometimes and I kind of laugh and I'm like, okay, this is the greatest mission of all time. Mm. Like we're on the greatest mission of all time. There's nothing else I'd want to be doing at this point. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm such a believer that like we, and you know, specifically I'll speak for myself and you and for other light bringers, we're here to, to usher in a new reality that hopefully is in support and in service to, to humanity and to the earth and in, in synchronicity and in, um, right relation with the cosmos and with you know everything that we're a part of are you optimistic about the future are you like what what is your what is your stance i mean that's such a big question like do you think there's going to be some massive cataclysmic catastrophic events in the world that change us i do i do too honestly i think it has to yeah it's the only way yeah, yeah something's got to burn mm-hmm. that we can't it can't be a shift it can't be like oh this is the age of aquarius and you know, no, the, 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 everything has to get dismantled and it has, and that's going to come with a lot of destruction. And, um, Richard Rudd, uh, founder of the Gene Keys, who I'm doing that retreat with mm-hmm. coming yeah, the up and Gene Keys changed, changed me in a very uh, big way. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's like my, he's the closest person that resembles my father. Wow. His energy signature is identical to my dad. Mm-hmm. It's just unbelievable. And to be able to go to uh, that island and lead a freedom sovereign retreat with him. So we're basically, he he's going to be speaking on the 55th gene key of victimization, mm. which we're, we're vaporizing right now, this victim mentality or lack mentality or poverty conscious, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to be speaking on the philosophy of freedom, which is a deep anthroposophical perspective on what f- true freedom is. Mm. And so um, he thinks in 2027, or he's predicting through his, um, through his, astrological approach is that the great awakening is happening and there's going to be a lot of resistance and and when there's resistance there's going to be major fire things can snap or they come bouncing back that's right (laughs) that's right and i i feel that um rudolf steiner predicted a that in 2020 we'll have 20 years so to 2020 to 2040 we'll be in such the depth of araman the and the the demon of materialism losing our soul, losing who we are, getting into a material matrix, that if we don't shake that, we're going into something called the eighth sphere. Mm -hmm. And the eighth sphere will start developing in the late 2020s into the 30s. And by the time we're in 2040, um, we're going to be developed, we're going to be in some like dystopic frame where Mm -hmm. we've completely forgotten what we've forgotten. That always brings me back to how we're raising kids and creating families and building community. At the end of the day, um, you and I can shout this from the top of the mountains, um, but we have to ha- take action. Mm-hmm. And taking action means that we're bringing life into this world that is brought in brought in through freedom and sovereignty. And, and we need each other. Like people are so I isolated need- in these days. Like we need community. As someone who's built a successful business myself, and I'm sure you know this too, like you need a team. You can't do everything yourself. And that applies for family, community, all the things. Agreed. Surrounding yourselves with your reflections Mm -hmm. and honor and having communication at the highest level and compromise and all those things and and really a strategy and everyone's in their real dharmic mission Mm -hmm. right like they're what they're here to do Mm -hmm. i always ask people especially when i'm being interviewed i'm i always go how many people so let me ask you bella how many people on this plane of existence right now that have incarnated into these wombs into these bodies are actually living in their dharma, what their soul contract was to come into this world. Very few, like one percent, maybe. Right, maybe, mm-hmm. right, if that. So, if one percent of the world is actually here doing what their purpose is, that means ninety-nine percent of the world is in chaos. Mm-hmm. Now you know where we're at. Now you know why our systems are falling apart. Now you know why we're, you know, violent wars and you know breakdowns and we're being led into all this crazy stuff yeah. and the authority that's over us it's insanity and it's- have you heard of the laser theory where like if one i think it's like if one one thousandth of a laser 
um, like the light beams or the particle or the waves can like synchronize, then the rest of the light will all synchronize and begin to kind of move at the same speed. I believe that that's kind of how the evolution of humanity is supposed to work like if enough of us individually can awaken to our soul's purpose and you know first be selfish enough that we fill our own cup so that we can then support others in doing so that we are thank you (laughs) that we'll be we'll be able to actually create lasting change and and so my my question for you is what do you think people can do to maintain hope or whatever qualities that they need to brace themselves for everything that's to come and for all of the inevitable challenges that arise. I've heard of that laser theory, uh, wave particle energy brings and sparks the uh, collective Mm -hmm. energy. So it forms into one beam. Um, You can call that the hundred monkey effect Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, some people believe that there's going to be 144,000 light workers that are Mm -hmm. creating the expansiveness. And um, either way, all that could be accurate. Or it could just be a bunch of bullshit. Doesn't matter um, because I don't believe in hope. Really, I don't. I I think hope is dangerous. Okay. I think in I think gnosis, like mm. true gnosis, mm-hmm. like, and I don't mean being delusional. Can you define gnosis for anyone who might not know what it is? Gnosis means that you've you've worked your intuitive muscle, mm. and so your intuition is now running at like a, a clairvoyant level or a psychic, of, uh, you know. What, psychic energy and psychic phenomenon and you know remote viewing that's all real we know that i mean that there there is magic in this world we're an electric grid and so i i believe that if we're just and i i'm playing with words but and i don't want this to be semantics but if we're just hoping or we're just having a little hoping is less than faith if we're just hoping that means that we're in some kind of anxiety position and we're projecting that something could happen and we want it to happen, but we have no idea. We have to make it happen. Yeah, hope kind of takes us out of the, the account, takes us out of accountability. It That's can correct. take us out of accountability. I see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it weakens our position. And remember, the biology of belief is real. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want to, um, pr- you know, put the pressure for individuals to build their cups full Mm -hmm. and meet me with a full cup and meet their partners with a full cup. So you're not operating with a parasitic energy or an unconscious vampiric energy because you, you just need and need and need. And I would say most people don't are not bad people. They don't want to hurt someone. They don't want to suck them dry. They want to be, they want, they want love. They want to be affirmed. I mean, look Mm -hmm. at the love languages right Mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, um, it's calling in your God-given right to be part of humanity's wave of reconciling all the crap that we've been going through mm. and choosing to be part of the solution and not just getting back into the karmic cycle. Mm. Because I think we're, we're on some kind of hamster wheel right mm. now with karma and yeah. people are just doing the same shit over and over. You can see it in their lives. Like I've, I know friends that literally have gotten into the same relationship with different people, but it's the same person mm-hmm. for the last 10, 15 years. Yep. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Or it's mirroring their dad or it's mirroring their mother, the trauma wounds. And it's like, what are you doing? You know, you're you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over and you gotta over. Got to learn the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Like learn the lesson and like, come on, yeah. like it's time, like mm-hmm. get up. And so mm-hmm. it's a little bit of tough love. We got to have some tough love too. You yeah, know? like holding people and yourself accountable with love. Absolutely. Yeah. And it starts with looking in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, so I do the same thing. for. I'm not perfect. I mean, I'm constantly um, working on myself, mm-hmm. you know, and, con- and I'm, I'm so vulnerable in so many ways with, with my crew and my people, which has really helped me uh, get into a better state. There was a moment there uh, in my awakening process, my deep, deep awakening process where I was like so full on in the mystic. And then I realized, like, okay, wait a second. This isn't, this is not. Come back to earth. Yeah, come, I had to come back to earth mm-hmm. and be pra- pragmatic mm-hmm. with my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember your humanity. That's been a big lesson for me too. Shaveen, thank you so much for this beautiful conversation. Can you let listeners and viewers know where they can find you, where they can find Symbiotica? Well, I'll make some, sure to add your links as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that was an incredible, incredible integration with you and getting mm-hmm. to know your background and things of that nature. So I really appreciate, Bella, you opening up the space for this. And uh, hopefully hopefully this lives on and inspires people and know that this is all coming from a place of love and reverence mm-hmm. and honor. Um, I'm here for it. Um, I'm your brother. 
And um, I mean, you can find me. I'm not really on, I, the only social media I'm on is uh, Insta Scam. I mean, Instagram. <laughs> and uh, and I have private Telegram rooms. Wink, wink. And uh, Symbiotica. And uh, I'm doing some really cool projects with my brother Robert Edward Grant. We're building a new internet called Orion, which is going to change everything. There's so much incredible stuff. I'm surrounded by so many beautiful people. I'm just every day I get to rise and be honored to be in this body and be in this life and be a, a legacy for my father and my, my ancestors. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> for anybody who's listening. If you're a first time listener, um, if you leave a review, I, me and my team, you can email hello at bellodivine.com or, e or DM me on Instagram and we'll send you a free meditation. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this conversation and we'll catch you in the next episode.